here's an example of solar oriole photographs of Seguin. And we have African dust. And Asian dust does the same thing, by the way. That Asian dust comes back and does the same thing. You may have Asian dust on your car and not know where it came from. You might think it's pollen. Well, if it's yellow, it might be pollen. But guess what color Gobi Desert dust is? Yellow. And I've seen our park completely covered by, by it in a few years since I've been, looking, been studying all this. You can see what clouds do. And here's some nice clear days in September. Just got back from Hawaii. The cleanest day I've ever measured in 17 years of going to Hawaii every year to stay at the Mobile Observatory. The cleanest year was, the cleanest day was May the 2nd of this year. The sky was so dry that only two-tenths of a millimeter of water vapor were above Mauna Loa Observatory, and at Mauna Kea, where the telescopes are, about 2,000 feet higher, there was zero water vapor above the observatory. Incredible. The sky was so The sky was drier than the stratosphere. They can monitor your temperature. Everybody can do this. I once wrote a comic book. That's when I had dark hair. And uh, Tom Jefferson Science Project. Thomas Jefferson was a president who really did science. He didn't just talk about it. He didn't make money from it. He didn't have any agendas. He just measured the temperature. He wanted to know the minimum temperature every day and the maximum temperature every day. And he recorded it on a little ivory pocket notebook. It had 12 pages that would rotate. He'd write it down with a pencil. And then later in the week, he'd log it into his garden book. And he'd erase the ivory pages and start over again. He was an authentic amateur scientist. And he was measuring temperature from 1810 to 1816 every day at Monticello. And he noticed that there was a big dip in 1816. What caused that? Some of you know. The eruption of what volcano? Tambora in Indonesia. It was the worst volcano eruption in the last 250 years. And it caused starvation in parts of North America. It caused a year without a summer in northeastern United States and Canada and northern Europe, where we had snowfall in July. One volcano did that. And Jefferson unknowingly was measuring the temperature when that occurred. And from his temperature, we could see the drop in temperature was like three or four degrees that year as compared to the average from the rest of 1810 to 1816. Amateur scientist, former president of the United States, and a man who was one of the few who actually measured the effect of the greatest volcano in, in, in our memory. Uh, daily monitoring of sunlight, ozone, and atmosphere at Geronimo Creek. That's what I do. You might not be able to do that, but you can get my data and other people's data and do the same thing. So uh, I'll just show you two instruments. Uh, I'll just show you one. This is Microtops, and it started as a very simple homemade instrument I built to measure the ozone layer. And it measured it so well that it found an error in a satellite. Yeah. That was my first paper in the journal Nature, and that resulted in a, some, a prize and some money. And I hired a friend, Scott Hagrup, to design a microprocessor controlled version of the instrument. And then that was picked up by the Solar Light Company. Now they now sell these. Uh, this is used around the world to measure the ozone layer, the water vapor layer above our heads, and haze. And so today in San Antonio, Texas, when we were waiting to come in, the ozone layer was 308.7 Dobson units as measured over by the river, not a few blocks away from here. And in Seguin, uh, at solar noon today, it was 312.1 Dobson units. What does that mean? 300 Dobson units is the world average for the ozone layer, sort of within the average. And what is a Dobson unit? If you were to take all the ozone in the atmosphere and bring it down to the, temperature, to the surface of the Earth at standard temperature and pressure, it would form a layer 300 Dobson units, or 3 millimeters. So 1 millimeter is 100 Dobson units. So the entire ozone layer that protects us from being killed by the extremely powerful ultraviolet rays of the sun is as thick as a dime and a nickel. That's it. You measure water vapor the same way. If you can take all the water vapor down to the surface of the Earth and measure it at standard temperature and pressure, it would form a layer of liquid water. So today, in San Antonio, Texas, by the river, that layer was 2.41 centimeters thick, almost, a, almost an inch of water above our heads. The higher that number gets, the, the more humid it is, the higher the dew point. And it can get up to seven. You can get seven centimeters of column water vapor. That's the highest I've ever measured. But at Mauna Loa the other day, 0 0.02 millimeters. That's really, really dry. Uh, this stores 800 scans and uh, works it's getting old, I had to open it to turn it off. It's been used in Brazil, uh, uh, measuring ozone for NASA when their satellite went bad. And uh, when I wrote the paper about their satellite having a problem, some of them weren't very happy, but others were very excited. They invited me to give a speech at NASA about finding the error in their satellite.